What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back out in the bait laboratory and we are gonna be making some plastics. Got a brand new mold in that I wanna show you guys. It's the Caney Creek Glider Mold from Do It Molds. Um, you guys have seen me make Ned Rigs, the actual heads themselves. You've seen me make the Midwest Finesse Plastics that I use for the Ned Rigs. You guys have seen me catch fish on the Ned Rig. I'm gonna put a clip in right now. There's one. There's one. There's one. Finally, it's been a tough morning. It feels like a better one. You never know when you got light line, spinning rod. You never know what they're gonna be like. It's fighting good though, that's for sure. Oh yeah, it's a solid, solid fish. Solid fish. There we go. There we go. Not a giant, but. This one, one of the, the morning, morning so, so far, far, but the net rig, rig is an awesome, awesome technique. technique. You can you catch, catch a ton, ton of fish, you can catch them shallow, you can catch, you can catch them deep, and, and on, on a, a tough, tough morning, morning like this, the net rig is going to get you bites. bites. There's, There's no wind, wind super, super clear water. water. This, this is, is where you got to throw the net rig. And these net rigs, man, they get bit. They get bit. They don't always catch big ones, but they can but they definitely are gonna get you bites when you can't get bit on anything else. But I think that this is gonna be a really cool addition to the Ned Rig um, baits, for at least for what I'm using. Um, I love to catch smallmouth on Ned Rigs. I love to catch, you know, uh, spotted bass on, and even the largemouth like to play with the Ned Rig a little bit, but I definitely think that the spotted bass and the smallmouth really, really eat the Ned Rig well. Um, but I really think that this is a pretty cool mold. I've got the mold itself, to three inch bait and also have specific tails, a mold for the tails so we can make different color tails, add them on to the shank of the uh, bait. But I think this is gonna be a really cool little Ned Worm. Um, I think you've seen, if you're into the Ned Rig game a lot, you'll, you'll see some different baits on the market that are comparable to this one. And I think you'll get a good idea of what those are. Um, once you see the mold and see the baits in person, but I, I want to show you some differences uh, between the one that's on the market and this one, so that way you guys get an idea of, of what you're getting if you decide to get this mold. But I, I definitely think this is going to be a cool one to to get um, your hands on. I also think that um, you know when I go up to Lake Shasta in uh, January for the Toyota Series event up there, I think that I'm going to have this in my hand and I definitely think I'm going to catch some spotted bass on this bait. But enough talking, let's get to making these baits. So if you guys hear that clicking sound in that intro, it's because I am making Ned Worm or Ned Rigs as we speak and uh, they're baking in the oven right now. So that is why you keep hearing that ticking sound. So bear with me, but I gotta make the videos when I can. Okay, so that's the Caney Creek Glider tail mold. So what we can do is we can make tails in these cavities and then go over to the Caney Creek Glider mold itself, add those tails back in, inject plastisol into this mold. It's gonna fill up this part, connect to our tail, so then we can have two different color baits. Obviously you can do them just as single colors if you want to, but using the tail mold will make it so like if you wanna have green pumpkin with a chartreuse tail or something like that, you make the tails, you set the tails in your mold, then you pour the green pumpkin in there and then you have a green pumpkin chartreuse tail. So we're gonna do something similar. I'm gonna see what I have available, um, some remelts, and then uh, we'll get to going. Okay, so we got our two cups of remelts. This one is going to be a green pumpkin and this one is gonna be turning into a chartreuse color. We're gonna do chartreuse tails with green pumpkin bodies. We just gotta melt this down and add that co uh, color into this one and then we'll be all set and ready to go. So in the past I did a remelt video and somebody was upset that I didn't talk about how long I warm up the remelts for, if I stir it, blah, 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 stuff like that. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna put that remelt into the microwave for a minute and a half and then I'm gonna check it and then I'm gonna put it back in for another minute and a half, 30 seconds, depending on 
um, how much it's been melted and stuff like that. I'm not super concerned about keeping the clarity or keeping that white color super vibrant because I'm gonna be making it uh, chartreuse. I obviously don't wanna burn the plastic, but I'm not as concerned about keeping it crystal clear like I am if, if I'm starting a color from scratch because then I'm gonna go 30 second increments at a time, stir it 30 seconds, stir it 30 seconds, blah, 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 and so on until I get it up to that 350 degrees. So I'm going to take it, we're going to put it into the microwave to start off, close it up, and then minute and a half, there we go, we'll start it off. Okay, so our minute and a half is up, so we're going to open it up, not too hot yet, but what we are going to do is check to see how well it's melted down. We definitely still have uh, some more melting to do, but it's definitely melting down there on the bottom. Um, what we're gonna do is we are gonna add a lot of chartreuse in here and then we're gonna add some black flake into the mix as well So that way we have like a chartreuse pepper that's gonna go on there for our tail So we're gonna grab this put it back in to the microwave and then we're gonna do it for another minute All right, so we're gonna check on it again should have a fair amount more melted down plastisol in there, which we do Still have a ways to go, but uh, it's definitely heated up in there. Probably shouldn't have done it as quickly as I did, but it is what it is at this point. But you, if, if I were to do this all over again, I definitely would have gone a little slower in the remelt process because the stuff on the bottom got way hot, way faster than the rest of it because it's melting it down as I'm stirring it in here right now. So if you're doing some remelts, definitely go a little bit slower than I did, but um, that's usually when you burn plastic is when you're being impatient and trying to melt it down too quickly. So take your time and uh, get it done right. Okay, so we're gonna check on our plastisol. Should be ready to add some color into, which it is. But as you can see, I got some yellow in here, so I did burn it a little bit, but not too much to where we can't we can't use it. But uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the chartreuse in there, and I'm gonna add a bunch in there. So we really get this nice and bright. Might be more than we need, but I don't think we can go too bright in this scenario, especially when I burn the plastisol a little bit. But actually that's turned out to be kind of a nice little color in there. There's some different pearl whites in here and stuff, so we're definitely gonna keep that pearl kind of a sheen going on. And this is gonna be a little bit of a thicker color because sometimes you get those chartreuse colors and they're kind of see-through-esque, but this one's gonna be definitely a little bit more of a thick chartreuse because of the pearl and stuff like that. It's definitely gonna be a little thicker than, uh, than some of the chartreuse colors that are, that are out there, but that's okay, because I just wanna show you guys how to do this more so than anything. And I um, ran out of Plastisol, so I needed to find something in order to do this video. So I had some remelts in the garage. So we're just trying to make do. And this is something that you guys can do too, is if you have any remelts or anything like that, you can take leftover plastisol that was in your cups or leftover sprues, all that kind of stuff and really make some cool baits, especially if you like to use like green pumpkins and stuff like that. I always have a lot of green pumpkin left over, so I can definitely, you know, make a lot of green pumpkin style baits, even if I'm out of fresh, clean, clear Plastisol. Okay, so our Plastisol is ready to go. And um, I added in more chartreuse color off of camera because it just wasn't bright enough for me. You can still see that pearl in there for sure. And um, all told, I would imagine this was probably in the uh, microwave for a total of probably three, three and a half, four minutes, something like that. But what I'm looking for right now is my black flake, which for some reason I cannot find at the moment. So let me look for it and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I found my black flake. It was in the wrong, it was, I was looking in the wrong drawer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some black flake and uh, add it in there. We're just gonna put a lot in there. One quarter teaspoon or half, actually one half teaspoon right there. And then now we just gotta mix this all in. There we go. Okay, there we have it. That's our 
color right there. There you go, now it's now you can see it pretty good. But that's our color right there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a single injector, and that's the nice thing about getting tail molds and stuff like that, is you're able to use single injectors for the whole process. And I go over to our tail mold, even pressure down, just like so. Hold that pressure just like when you make any plastic at all, or any plastics, you gotta hold that pressure. And then we are going to top off our sprue, like so. Everything go back in the mold. And we'll check on those tails here in a second. Okay, so now it's time to check on our tails. One thing I like to do is I like to tap the top of the sprue. And if it's not tacky and there's no plastic that gets stuck on your finger because it's still all melted, then usually you're pretty much ready to go to open up your mold and to check out what you made. So we're gonna take those clamps off. We're gonna open up the mold. And we're gonna check them out. So you can see all of our tails. We got eight of them in this mold. So you can make a bunch of tails at one time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these ones out, set them off to the side, and then get set up to do another run of tails. Okay, so our plastisol is ready to go for round number two. It's gonna suck it up, go over to our tail mold, even pressure down, stop when, the, when it stops. We're gonna hold that pressure. Now we're gonna go top off the sprue. I think I'm gonna do one more run of these off camera and uh, then we'll do the next step in the process. Okay, so second round of tails is ready to come out of the mold. Open it up. Go ahead and check these guys out. Once again, they turned out pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna do two more sets of these off camera and then we'll get on to using the actual Candy Creek mold to make our baits. Okay, so there you have it. There is our tails. I ended up making three extra um, sets of them. I decided that I'm gonna sell some of these if anybody wants them. So I'm gonna put them up on my Instagram, probably put them up on the website as well. So if you want any of these, check out the website and you'll see the final product here in a second. But these are the tails. So right now I'm in the process of getting the green pumpkin color melted down so we can pour it into the, the Caney Creek mold with our tails already inside. Uh, but as you can see, it's starting to melt down and I'm trying to go a little bit slower this time so I don't burn it or anything like that. But uh, yeah, just taking a break, stirring everything around, putting it back in and another 30 seconds to a minute that we go. Okay, so what we need to do with these tails now is cut them off of our sprue. So you just literally take a pair of scissors and cut these guys off. You might be able to pull them off, but I'm not 100% sure, so I think the safer bet is just to cut them off with a pair of scissors, and uh, then once we're done cutting these all off, we will then just set them back into our mold um, that matches up perfectly because we have the tail mold go going into the Caney Creek mold. But as you can see, we got that little pile of tails right there, and we'll set these back in our mold in here in a second, but I gotta make sure that green pumpkin is ready to go first. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna check on our green pumpkin. Still have a little bit of ways to go to get our plastisol melted down and ready to pour. But uh, like I said, I'm taking my time this time, but the next time you see this, it'll be ready to go and we'll be making some baits. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to set our tails into the mold. So literally, all you gotta do is just place this guy right back into the cavity and it should line up just perfectly because this was taken out of the Caney Creek tail mold so everything should line up really really well just like so and one thing you want to make sure of is just be gentle with everything so it all gets in there you don't want to force it or anything like that it should go in there pretty easily it kind of feels right once it's in the right spot what we're going to do now is just close it up and then just make sure that it's all nice and flush. So that way there's no gaps or anything like that. And then we'll put our clamps on. And then once that green pumpkin plastisol is ready to go, we're just gonna inject it right into these baits. Okay, well it looks like the green pumpkin plastisol is ready to go. Um, you guys already saw me put those tails into the full Caney Creek glider mold. So what we're gonna do is make sure that this is all nice and stirred up. 
and we are going to take our injector draw up our plastic it's like so come over to the mold even pressure down like always hold that pressure at the bottom and I'm gonna get, hold it just a little bit stronger than I normally would just to try to make sure that these tails fuse with everything so that way they don't fall off easily or anything like that and sometimes you want to shoot the plastic at a little bit higher um, of a temperature than you normally would because you want this secondary plastisol to adhere well to the tails that you just made so we're going to top off that sprue just like so pour the extra back in the cup and then we'll put this back in the microwave so that way it doesn't cool down too much before we pour our next ones okay so the time has come to check these baits out to see how they look and take our clamps off grab our knife to open up the mold hope it turned out well we'll find out now here in a second open up the mold and yep they did they turned out pretty darn cool there's our little mold right there with our baits pretty cool looking little baits i like those are going to catch fish those small mouth those spots they're going to these are going to catch fish i like these things these are cool okay so once again we are going to lay our tails into our mold just got to be a little gentle my hands are kind of tacky from being in the gloves so the plastic wants to stick on them but just lay them in that mold try to get it in there as perfectly as possible you kind of just feel it when it goes in right just kind of sets in and doesn't really move anymore it kind of just all goes in there just right and then we're going to close up our mold just like so make sure it's flush it is put our clamp on just like so and then i'll get the plastisol ready to go and we'll make some baits okay so i think our plastisol is ready to go for the second run of these baits and the more i look at those last four that i just made the more i like these things and the more i think they're going to catch fish if you live around smallies and you make your own plastics you got to get one of these molds this thing's pretty cool we're going to hold that pressure at the bottom a little bit longer than normal and you want to make sure that you 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 pour these or inject this plastisol a little bit hotter than you probably would normally um just so that way those tails melt up to the bodies well and then top off the sprue put that extra back in and uh we'll check these out once everything's ready all right so it's time to check on our second round of baits and we're gonna open up the mold check out our baits yeah these things are cool i really like them that green pumpkin looks really good into that chartreuse tail these things are pretty cool i'm really liking them and i just like these little this is like the epitome of finesse here with that little tail down there and uh yeah i'm really really happy with these and then while i got the mold open i'm gonna take the gloves off and we're gonna do one more of these pours on camera and then i'll finish up everything that i got going off camera i don't want to bore you guys with you know that long of a video doing the same thing over and over and over again but i definitely wanted to highlight this mold and like literally i found it just kind of being bored just looking around with different molds that um do it had and decided to get it and um yeah here we are making these things and i think they turned out really really cool and i definitely think these things are going to catch catch some fish that's for sure now if you guys decide you want any of these i'm going to sell them in packs of eight and i think i'm going to have uh five packs all said and done so check the website and uh, if you want some make sure to grab a pack okay so our plastisol is ready to go for another round of these and uh draw the plastic up over to the mold even pressure down holding the pressure holding the pressure I like to hold it a little bit longer than I normally do as well, just so that way it gives the, that pressure for that, that body and that tail to come together. And uh, just, you want a good, nice fusion. You don't want any of these tails falling off, which I haven't had any problems like that with 
other baits that I've made with different color tails or anything like that. But just in case you wanna just, for good measure, it's nice to add that extra length, a little bit extra heat, and you should have a good product at the end. Okay, so I think our worms, our Caney Creek gliders are ready to go. Um, we're gonna open up the mold and check out our baits. And there you got it. These things turned out really awesome. It pours really, really good too. Okay, well there you have it. We got all of our Caney Creek gliders with that green pumpkin chartreuse tail. I think these turned out really, really cool. I'm really happy with them. It's a fun little project and definitely a bait I'm gonna get some use out of. Really hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. But uh, yeah, I really think these turned out good. Well, as you can see guys, pretty cool little baits we got right there. Um, I think they turned out pretty cool. I think that that chartreuse tail is really gonna be great for those smallies and even those spotted bass. And I know that even the largemouth like a little bit of that chartreuse color out in the desert lakes around um, Arizona, Nevada, stuff like that, like Lake Mead, Lake Havasu, Mojave, that chartreuse really does play a factor. And I know that smallmouth uh, typically like that chartreuse color as well. But pretty cool little mold and uh, one I definitely wanted to showcase for you guys and one I definitely think I'm going to be using a lot of. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching me put these two piece colors together, how you get those tails in the tail mold and then how you add them on to the uh, body of the bait as well. Pretty simple process, um, but I do recommend using that tail mold. You can get away without using the tail mold. I've done some um, baits in the past where you just cut the tails off yourself. You'd have to run like full chartreuse color baits, cut the tails off yourself and then lay that back inside the mold. Definitely an option, but definitely faster to get the tail mold. So like I said at the beginning of this video, or in the middle of the video actually, um, I am gonna sell some of these. So if you guys want them, head over to my website, mattlunafishing.com, and I'm gonna have a handful of packs available for you guys to buy. Pretty cool little baits. I definitely think they'll catch some fish. And I measured it up with one of my um, Ned rigs I have in the garage, and it matches up perfectly. And I'll show you that right now. So as you can see, these Caney Creek gliders work perfectly on a Ned rig. This is the Midwest Finesse Jig head that I pour using my do it molds and this Caney Creek glider works perfectly fits on there just right perfect size for that head and um, yeah I'm really satisfied with this whole package and I definitely think it's going to catch some fish. So I know some of you are going to notice that this looks a lot like the Missile Baits Ned Bomb. One a couple things to note is the Ned Bomb has a little bit smaller flap on it so the tail is a little bit smaller it's a little bit wider a little narrower and the body is a little bit longer on the ned bomb so those are a couple of the noticeable difference that i that i noticed uh comparing the two but overall i definitely think these caney creek gliders that i made up with my remelts are going to definitely catch some fish well that's going to do it for today's video i really appreciate you guys watching and if you noticed that like the lighting changed randomly at the end of this video. It's because I had to stop what I was doing for a few hours and uh, go to soccer practice with one of my daughters and then eat dinner and stuff and then had to finish up making the video and getting these baits made up. But I hope you liked today's video and if you did, make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And uh, also, if you have any questions or anything like that, make sure to leave comments in the comment section. And as always, make sure to check the description of today's video to see all the stuff that I was using in today's video. Again, I really appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya!